Sometimes I feel like I have two children. Both stumble their way into the modern world, new and apparently ignorant of the cultural shifts happening over the last few decades. They stumble, they fall, and sometimes need a diaper change. But they do their best, gosh darn it. So I tend to look the other way when one of them spits up all over me. But over the last few months, something amazing has happened. One of the children, the older of the two actually, started taking his first few steps towards maturity. It discovered things about itself it somehow never seemed to know before, like how great it could be just by being itself, and not trying to outdo its younger brother. Pretty soon, it was leaping and bounding, doing cartwheels and soaring high above his sibling. Everyone talked about how grown up he was acting, and we were all just so proud of him. Sadly, all is not well for his little brother. Even though he tried harder than his sibling, he just couldn't get the same attention. And suddenly, all of his old tricks, they started seeming dull and repetitive. His stumbles would look clumsy, his falls would appear due to his own ignorance, and suddenly, when he pooped himself, it wasn't quite an adorable mistake so much as an embarrassing bowel expulsion. Also, he keeps banging his head on the corner of the coffee table and I'm not sure if he's ever going to walk straight again. So what happened in these last few months? How on earth did we get here? Well, let's travel back in time to a magical place long, long ago. The before time. A mystical period few are even alive to remember. An age long past known only as earlier this year. It was a simpler time. Men grew their beards out. Women had yet to earn the right to vote. And children were left to fend for themselves in the wild. Marvel had just finished its Big Secret Wars event, robustly showing that it was at the top of its game while DC had farted out Convergence the year before and hoped nobody would notice. The latter was struggling, attempting to rebrand itself with a new Batman, a Superman with less powers, and a... same Wonder Woman, I guess. The point being, they were a bit of a mess, while Marvel was producing great comics and seemed to be going in the right direction. Oh, there were problems, that's certain, but Marvel had been releasing lots of cool titles, and things were looking good for them. Then DC announced Rebirth. It shouldn't have been a surprise, really. Sales were flagging, and the new 52 wasn't just quite working out as I have thoroughly discussed already. At the time, I wrote off Rebirth as them trying to stir up some sales. I was tired of the endless reboots, mostly from the other company. And you know what? I'll say it right now. I thought Rebirth was a dumb idea. You can go back and see the first video I made in response to what were then only rumors of the reboot, and I was not kind nor optimistic for the company's future. And I was utterly and completely wrong. Luckily, when it comes to being wrong about something, I'm quite happy it's this. But Rebirth, in spite of there having been every warning sign that it could have all gone wrong, the bi-monthly release schedule, the use of Watchmen characters, the idea of bringing back lots of old fan favorites, all of it could have horribly backfired. Yet it didn't. They pulled it off. And I mean, it's all a little fresh. We're still in the early phases of Rebirth. They could tank this thing very easily in a surprisingly short amount of time, but right now, things are working. Sure, sooner or later mistakes will be made, and it's unrealistic to expect DC to stay great forever. But with a few months in, we can safely say Rebirth has been an astonishing success, commercially and critically. Even though they released a third of the comics Marvel did in July, DC sold more. The sales for August were described as embarrassing for Marvel. And you better believe September won't change much either. All-Star Batman number 1 was a colossal seller, having topped the charts with the biggest numbers I've seen since Amazing Spider-Man number 1 from a couple years ago. And unlike that comic, DC didn't really have to work any gimmicks to sell that title. All they really did was just be like, hey, it's Scott Snyder's new Batman comic, and BOOM! Blockbuster sales. Additionally, even though Marvel's been crushed in the sales lately, they're being buoyed up by Civil War 2. If it weren't for that event, Marvel would look even worse, but it's kinda helping them because it's generated at least some interest. And on top of all of that, critically, most titles released under Rebirth have been getting great responses, or at the very least, they've been good comics. It's been a fun time rediscovering titles that are getting back to their roots and telling some great stories. And while not all of them have been proven to be perfect, they've by and large attracted lots of readers with high quality and accessibility. The success of the bi-monthly model has also led to some interesting talk within DC as well. 
Originally, the plan was to do this for the first six months before going back to a more normal monthly schedule, which I was totally fine with even though I'm not a fan of bi-monthly, because, you know, if it's temporary, it's okay. They were also doing the smart thing in having artists and writers work ahead and plan out these arcs before they started releasing them. Again, smart. But as they started to have this success, they've been rethinking this. What with the whole idea of some comics alternating stories between issues, like Wonder Woman, they're thinking about making two Wonder Woman comics and just having both creative teams go forward with it. To be honest, whatever they're planning, whether it be mini-series or doing more bi-monthly stuff, it all works. Because they've earned their credibility. Bi-monthly comics usually don't sell well and are generally problems, but DC has proven otherwise, that they can make it work. So they can pretty much do whatever they want, as long as they keep pushing out good content like what we've seen so far. The mood is exciting, fresh, and authentic. But then... There's the troubled child. Poor Marvel didn't really change meaningfully during the last few months, but that's their biggest problem. For the last five years, they've been doing the same thing over and over and over again. Big events, stupid stunts, and soft reboots. Relentlessly. Endlessly. In between all of that, there are lots of great writers and artists trying to eke out a story, and some have managed to occasionally do so but it feels like they're constantly being interrupted by one event or gimmick after another. It's getting stale, it's getting unbearable, and now that DC is showing it really doesn't have to be that way, to wild success, shockingly, within months Marvel has lost any advantage they may have had over their distinguished competition. Last month, we learned that once again, Marvel's big crossover event Civil War II, which has been hyped and advertised for months, is being delayed and extended to 8 instead of the 7 planned issues. Which is the exact same thing they did last year with Secret Wars. That's a silly and amusing coincidence, but there's also a lot of problems underlying this. First of all, it shows that Marvel doesn't plan and make this stuff before they start releasing it, unlike what DC's been doing. That's a bad idea because yes, while some excellent comics like Watchmen have experienced delays during their original release, it is really messing with fans when your flagship titles are doing this, and only because it feels like you aren't giving the writers enough time to make their projects in the first place. It also speaks to the endless wave of soft reboots, characters going temporarily evil, and headline-grabbing changes that are finally reaching this critical mass of tolerance. When titles get delayed like this, it pushes the content into stuff that's supposed to happen after Civil War II, and it's messing with everything. I've defended a lot of these changes and decisions before, but that's because I largely look at them individually. There's nothing wrong with Spider-Man going bad, or Captain America going bad, or Iron Man going back. It's when you start doing it constantly and without end. Marvel gives no time for their characters to have their own stories and arcs, instead barraging their writers non-stop with this endless wave of overhyped nonsense. I was on board for a long time. I didn't mind Girl Thor or Black Captain America or Black Iron Man, but these last few months have broken me when these are all happening at once. <laughs> There's been way too much, way too fast over the last five years, and it's turning readers off, myself included. If you're making a big change, you need to give writers time to show the effect these events are having on these characters and the world around them. They never, ever have done this in the last five years, and it's just breaking the readership. We are long, embarrassingly long overdue for a fix, to uh, slow things down a little bit, to take their time. You know, DC hasn't done a really big event yet, and they won't for another couple months until Justice League vs. Suicide Squad, and even then, that's not a full-blown company-wide crossover. It'll be important, it'll have effects on the ongoing canon and stuff, but this will be after all the writers have had a good six months or so to really stretch their muscles, get these characters on firm ground, and have their stories working and selling. You know, like professionals might. But Marvel can't wait. Part of the criticism Civil War II has gotten, and one aspect of the criticism that I really agree with, is that this event doesn't work so close to the reboot post-Secret Wars. The appeal of a Civil War is seeing characters you care about split apart, and forced to fight each other. That's why the movie worked so well this year. We've already had the investment in all these Avengers, and that's why the one that we don't have the investment in, the Dark One, doesn't work. 
Uh, unfortunately, Marvel seemed to lose this fact, and I think that's why Civil War II doesn't quite have the same impact on people. Yes, these are more or less the same Tony Stark and Captain Marvel from before Secret Wars, except for Tony was evil before Secret Wars, but I guess we just forgot, because we always forget, or just move on as soon as possible with Marvel. <sighs> that's the tale of my two children. I wouldn't worry about things too much, these do move in cycles, it's no big deal one way or another, and if anything, it's just going to force Marvel to do something about all of this. Which is why I've made my declaration in the title. Everybody wins. Because we all win when a company makes quality content a priority. We get good comics, they get good money, and even the competition is forced to just do better. I really have to commend DC. Recently I highlighted everything wrong with the new 52, and with a few exceptions, they are addressing pretty much every single point on that list. Not in response to me, obviously, but because I was voicing a lot of complaints that fans had been voicing for years. They learned, and they got better. Marvel can do the same. In fact, they're kind of going to be forced to with this big sales chart. So like I said, everybody wins. Marvel wins, because they have to get better now. Or else, they're, well, the execs aren't going to last long if the shareholders aren't happy. And Disney, as much as they are giant and can barely even care about this tiny little fraction of their company, sooner or later, if it's wasting their money, they will come in and clear house. Ironically, much of this video could be weirdly mirrored to describe the current state of Marvel and DC in the world of movies, except in the exact opposite way. As I've hinted yet, the lessons seem to be lost on the DCEU, while MCU really understands all this stuff. It really comes down to who happens to be in charge of which corporate branch, of course. Marvel and DC have been constantly locked in this push and pull for decades anyways, so again, like I said, there's no real reason to worry about any of this. Sometimes one gets ahead of the other in one field or another, but both always find a way back eventually. It's not the end of anybody's world, it's the start of something new and exciting for the comic book world. It's worth noting and applauding. I have no idea what happens next. All I can do is have faith that it's going to be fun. Because everybody wins. I want to jump up and down and scream it at the top of my lungs, and then awkwardly slink away when strangers wonder what I'm doing. Like always. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.